Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Trip. We are XTC with... I'm Shalanda. I'm Tristan. And I'm Chris. And as an entrepreneur, uh, starting out growing your business, you may have a destination, but the journey getting there can be a trip. We want to be your travel companions and inject a dose of XTC as we explore real-life conversations about navigating the world of entrepreneurship in the U.S. and the Caribbean. So uh, here with my uh, esteemed colleagues and fellow hosts um, on the XTC mm. podcast, we have uh, already talked about uh, the what and how of entrepreneurship and the who and the why of entrepreneurship. Now we're going to talk about the when. When is there a right time? Uh, is there a right time? And so I wanted to start off with just a couple little statistics here um, to kind of uh, uh, prep us in um, this conversation. So the Kauffman Foundation reports that half of all adults over se and over 70% of college students say they want to become entrepreneurs. A staff by Statista estimates that by 2027, 86.5 million people will be freelancing in the United States, an amazing 50.9% of the total workforce. So in just a few years, uh, over 50% of the workforce in the United States will be running their own business or starting their own business. Um, the uh, one red flag that I do want to um, kind of wipe out to begin with is a lot of people immediately when it comes to like the when do I become an entrepreneur, uh, they go to age and whether or not they still have it in them to, um, you know, uh, to become successful. So I did want to point out one stat um, here that is uh, uh, according to findings from the National Bureau of Economic Research, the average entrepreneur is 40 years old. And the average age of leaders of high growth startups is 45 years old. Um, there are countless uh, stories out there of um, uh, entrepreneurs who started late in life, people that we, uh, you know, all look to for, you know, some of the greatest inventions um, uh, in the world are people who started, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, or even uh, 60s and 70s. So um, if age is not an issue, uh, the question is, when does entrepreneurship, um, when is it the right time, when is it the wrong time? Uh, we already kind of had, um, uh, in our uh, previous episode, I uh, did say that I may not have started my business, um, you know, the right way, uh, but Tristan and Shalanda, um, you know, as, uh, as my, my fellow um, uh, travelers on this trip, helped me realize that I didn't really start the wrong way um, or at the wrong time. It was just my journey and my unique journey. So um, as we get into this, uh, here's, you know, just a couple bullet points of when, when might be a right time and when might be a time to just consider um, holding back. But that does not mean that these uh, should apply to everyone or to you. Your story is going to be unique. So I just want to uh, clarify with that. So the when is, okay. yes. Can I jump in for a second? I just love Chris, right? Like he <laughs> comes and he drops all these nuggets on us. But to be oh honest, I, I had to pause because Chris opens the episode as my esteemed guest. Chris, you're my brother <laughs> from another mother. Let's just be real, you know? Like when we think of you and Tristan, I think of like salt and pepper. That's my bro. <laughs> We're traveling this entrepreneurship journey together. My esteemed guest. No, bro. No, bro. Let's keep it real. <laughs> but then the other thing, the other thing that got me is when you said the average age of entrepreneurs are 40. And I'm like, oh. fuck. I just made 51. <laughs> I'm over the hill. You could believe that, no. right, Chris? <laughs> the average age like, is the oh, middle, Shalanda, the middle. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh. to be real, listen, we're talking about when is the right time. I know I'm, I know I'm breaking it up and I'm, I'm trying to inject some humor, but I, I, I completely missed the stats because I was like, esteem guest and age? <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, get, let's get back on topic. Let's no, get no, back no. on topic. I got away with, with the esteemed guest. I was like, oh, man, he's professional. Okay, this is, this is what happens when you put this cap on. Everybody else started to see like we was kicking it on the couch. Chris was like, 
you know, these are my esteemed guests, and I'm here with my colleagues. I know. So we're on this trip together. I probably know what's on CNN, you know? Right. I, I'm, I'm the boring pilot, like, weather when no, you get there. No, no. <laughs> okay, you know what it is? I hope our listeners realize, this is what I hope our listeners realize, is that when we do our podcast, we really do our homework. We're bringing data, industry standards, best practices, and all of that stuff. But, you know, you got to inject humor in this in this trip. Because let me tell you, if you stay with the stats, you'll be like, oh, this right. is really yeah. good. It gets you know depressing I mean? quick. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Chris, so. something else that you said that, um, that, that if I could. Yep. Absolutely. Um, that, that really, I don't want to say at home was when you said the average age was 40. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I first started out. You I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm going to show you so I'm going to just kick it to you really quick. I, I, know I'm the old, I know I'm the old lady no. on this podcast, you know, but you ain't not gone. So. No, no. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Tristan. No, I got you. Like I got you to trip up on your words there. <laughs> <laughs> Just like how you trip me about, you know, who my who my favorite entrepreneurs are. Right. I, I have to read that list. I like, trust to defend myself and defend Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, when he All said right. that, it reminded me of when I first started. I mm -hmm. have an aunt. Um, what did they, they're accountants. And it hit me because I was about... I don't even know when I graduated college. I might have been about 22 or something like that. And 21, 22, and I was like, I'm doing a business. And with a lot of love, I felt it. They said things not to discourage me, but just really help you to think. And what it was, was that she was like, why don't you go work for a company first? Why you don't do this? So it was like, you know, this isn't the time to do it. Go work for somebody else. Go get that experience. And then when you get it, um, then you try it. And mm -hmm. when you said 40, it kind of resonated because I think they might have been, mm -hmm. they might have been just a little further from that age. However, mm -hmm. that's how they went about it, though. Yep. They worked um, in this accounting firm for years, like years, years. Yeah until the owner i think he passed or something and then it was like almost like they bought it from him or got i won't say get it from him i think it was even to a point like right before or his him croaking it was like mm -hmm. oh well we turn over the business for you it's still like in their name or whatever it is and then you just run the business for x amount of years and i believe he made some residual off of that and then that was it but i was like you know at the age 40, the one thing I think between, he said 40, so I'm going to kick it to you for real, for real. I was thinking of 50 to 65, and here's why. Because after you invest, hold on, hold on, after you invest those 30 years, hold right? Hold me back. Hold me back. The, <laughs> <laughs> after you invest those 30 years, <laughs> at that age, about that age is when I find like you have that little wiggle room with, with your cash flow. So then it becomes like it's easier to toss some money into this. It's easier to do this. Um, it's not it's uh, it's not as hard to start up because you've gained some capital over those years. So when you read those stats, I was like, what? That that it kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense. But why? But why bloom? then like like why can't we just bloom whenever mm -hmm. you know but I'll, I'll let you i'll let you get into it yeah i'm glad you you you, you kind of course corrected towards the end why can't we bloom whenever <laughs> um because no seriously because as my my initial response was 40 50 i mean if you feel compelled to start before mm -hmm. start before yep you know right. in a 20 in a 2020 Forbes article, it's titled, When is the Right Time to Start a Business? Yep. And basically, the author answer was, there's never a right time to start a business. What? That's how I feel. There will always be a reason to put off your entrepreneurial goals. Right. And it really comes down to creating the right time. Mm. You know? Because, okay, 
I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. Like when I'm not running my business, I'm binge watching on Netflix or Hulu, right? And this 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 new series, Hype House. Have you guys seen that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was like, okay, let me watch this. It's a house in California where they put a bunch of TikTok Kid. influencers in the same house. Yes, yes, I heard about it. Uh, yeah. sorry. these are teenagers, right. early twenties. They got like thirty followers. Now, how long has TikTok been in business? It's, I mean, when you compare it to like Facebook and Instagram, right, right. it's relatively right. it's, it's really young, oh right? Yep. But here it is, you have these teenage kids going on and making these videos and all of, it, it might seem like all of a sudden, but you know, the little backstory is it takes a little longer, but they have like 50, 30 million followers, 50 million followers living in these mega mansions and having all this money. And one of them, Charlie, um, what she has another spinoff episode but her point was i never thought i would have that amount of influence i never thought that i would have a business i never thought and now she's branching out she's having a clothing line she's having all of this stuff so basically the long and short of it is that there's really never a right time to start a business you need to be able to create the right time and be open to when there are opportunities to jump into the entrepreneurship trip. Yep. yep. So yep. one thing that goes with that too, um, really quickly, is that you just said it, uh, Shalana. It's uh-huh. timing and opportunity. That's uh-huh. what a lot. That that that's what success comes down to, and a little uh-huh. bit of luck. <laughs> but it's just a yeah. timing and opportunity. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. um, even look at um, when he's thinking about it, like I remember Jay Z in the Jay Z story. I think he went to tour Europe instead of being mm-hmm. on the streets of New York for a um, certain period of time when the guy that mm-hmm. he was running with got locked up. So if he knew if he was there at that point in time, time and an opportunity, mm-hmm. he would have been in jail with him. You know, mm-hmm. um, so again, like you were just saying, it's just that, that time and an opportunity is key. Yep. It's key. Yeah. And I, I would add, so I actually, um, so my th- three points that I had uh, uh, prepped here were for... Um, uh, one is yeah when preparation and opportunity align, um, mm-hmm. which uh, Shalon, I mean uh, Tristan, you're just talking about that, and you were even talking about the you know the um, the couple that you know were in their 40s and saying you know why don't you go get a job uh, right. for to heal the market, um, and that is the probably the the most academically uh, correct way to do it if you were to say like business mm-hmm. advice following yeah. uh, rules. Um, the other two uh, uh, areas that I said would um, uh, be the right time to start is a when you can no longer afford to, and that can be in in two different ways. Whether it is um, your soul can no longer afford to not be doing, um, you're you're just that passionate about uh, making that change or or making that jump. Um, and then the other one is when you can no longer afford to is uh, uh, like Shalanda, you mentioned you were on. 408 with your daughter and your daughter said, you know, you have all these people calling you all the time. Like, when are you going to start your business? So when the, um, when the, uh, demand from, uh, your potential customers or your audience, um, is telling you that it's time to become an entrepreneur because you've already established that. So if you're selling, um, if you're selling pies, you know, out of your kitchen, and all of a sudden mm-hmm. everybody's like in, in the neighborhood needs a pie, uh, you know, once or twice a week. And yep. now you're making more monies with making pies than you were at your nine to five, then that's, you know, mm-hmm. um, life telling you. Um, and then my other one is when, and this kind of happened to me is, uh, when life pushes you into it face first. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. so there is, you know, uh, ideally you want to create and prepare, um, for it, uh, for me with like my documentary, um, uh, it, yes, it was a timing thing, um, where the, the hurricane, uh, hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Um, uh, but for me, it was actually my job. Um, I had, uh, basically been promised a promotion at my year end review and everything. Um, and they, uh, uh, basically took that out from under me or, or unpromised it. Um, Mm -hmm. so I was at a point of, all right, do I continue working the nine to five that I'm, uh, clearly no longer appreciated at? Um, Mm -hmm. uh, or do I go and yet like take, take the sleep of faith. And so for me, it was, 
Um, I hadn't really prepared for it. I was like, I, I don't feel prepared, but I feel like this is life saying um, it's time for you to do Just something. Do it. Yep. Well, yeah. It's it's growth, though. So, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Shalana. It's growth. So, realistically, we'd never be prepared for it. Right. Because I feel mm-hmm. like it's one of those things where you come up with a checklist of 10, 10 things that I need to start this business. And then you get to the 10th thing and then you were like, oh, wait, you know what? I could do seven better right now. So I'm going to mm-hmm. put that as 11 because now I need to make sure I'm doing it to this standard or I'm doing it to that. So we keep finding reasons. We keep finding more why not as to the whys. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's mm-hmm. just it because when we look at it as, as like, I don't want to say just like that task and not growth. It's 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 always going to be a milestone that's down the road and never what we're doing now. So, you know, it's that's not for me now. That's not for me now. Oh, it's for me when I hit 30. It makes you know you hit 30 and you're like, yeah, but I don't have the finances to do it at 30. I'm going to wait until 35. And at 35, you got the finances and you're like, yeah, but I don't have that. I don't have the following. I, I need to get the following first. And before you know it, you're 80 talking about, I had a wonderful idea of starting this business that I never did. But you know what? Mm-hmm. You guys could do it or you can't do it because it's going to take X, Y, Z. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. And you're no longer the apex predator. Some allow Shalana. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you're talking about all of the why nots. And, you know, after Chris listed the three items, what came to mind was, you start a business when you can no longer afford not to Mm -hmm. because external situations have forced you to be innovative. And when we think of 2020, the pandemic for many of us, it was shut down. It was, we're in quarantine. People were losing their jobs. And that year, according to the census Bureau, more than 4.4 million new businesses were created in the U.S. during 2020. At that point, 4.4 million people felt like they had no other choice but not to not go after entrepreneurship. Hold on. They might have been a stimulus check involved, though. (laughs) Huh? They might have been a stimulus check involved, though. (laughs) There was a lot of business up at that point in time. So even with the stats of this game, there was a lot of business help and that's a whole nother podcast because mm-hmm. a lot of the business help went to entrepreneurs or to small business, small businesses based on the definition by the SBA right. that do not include the micro businesses, My, yep. which are fewer than one between one and 10 employees. The help didn't go to them, right. oh. but that's another, that's another podcast. Don't, don't get what the goals that we're making right now on a half a mil. <laughs> don't get me started yeah. no, no Shalana this is not the time we're going to give Chris the opportunity <laughs> <laughs> no but, but going back to what Chris was saying and what you were saying you know when is is there ever a good time you know and I think as, a, as an entrepreneur you know like I need to either shit or get off the pot yep. I think that's basically when it whether external factors say it's a good time or not, whether your family and friends say it's a good time or not, whether you're, you know, younger than 40 or not, and you don't have a whole wealth of experience, (laughs) it's basically when you say, I need to take this trip. I need to take this journey because if I don't, then you are going to be that 80 something year old saying I should have, would have, could have. And to be right. quite honest with you guys, that's my biggest fear in life. Mm-hmm. Mm. My biggest fear in life is to be on my deathbed with a whole bunch of should have, could have, would have, yep. you know? And that's why even though I have attempted and failed and busted face forward, yep. right? In this entrepreneurship journey, again, I'm like, it's something I need to do, so I don't have that shoulda, coulda, woulda. And, and it was funny. I'll uh, I'll I'll plug our uh, our guest um, for our next episode here, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sami yeah. um, uh, Hyman Marrero. So I was talking to her yesterday, and um, and this actually came up uh, unrelated to to the podcast. 
Um, but she was mm-hmm. like, it's like, it's like when you're, you know, becoming an entrepreneur is just like, um, uh, like deciding to have kids, um, yeah. or, uh, you know, to buy a new house or, uh, to break mm-hmm. up with, you know, a partner in a relationship that's not working out. Like there's, there's never mm-hmm. going to be a right time and nothing's going to prepare you for being a parent. You could read all the blogs and the top mm-hmm. 10, you know, things you need to prepare, uh, ahead of time. And sure. Some of them are, are, are great and helpful and you'll pull information, but until you are <laughs> responsible mm-hmm. for a life or for your business, um, and, uh, and everything that comes with that, um, you, you really can't prepare. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, obviously you can, uh, if you have, you know, technical skills or, or business acumen, uh, marketing, mm-hmm. um, you know, prowess that you can, uh, apply towards your business to add value to it. Uh, but every business is going to be, um, unique yeah. and you just have to, you just mm-hmm. have to do it. And, and yes, you, mm-hmm. you may fail. Um, but as long as you fail, uh, fast and fail smart and fail forward, um, you are, uh, uh, onto a, a pretty good track, but I didn't want to, um, just throw these out here for conversation. So, um, some things I had written down for when is not the right time. I'm going to uh, take the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll list the three and then we can, we can, uh, discuss mm-hmm. here. So the first one is, um, uh, that I had put down is when it would irresponsibly or recklessly jeopardize the well being of loved ones. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, for us, um, as on, you know, for myself as an entrepreneur before, uh, my child came along, I admit I would take a lot more risks, um, and maybe mm-hmm. make not the best financial decisions with the business, um, because mm-hmm. I was going towards things I was just, you know, passionate about or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you have that, um, uh, if you have that, that grounding or, or somebody who relies on you to, you know, put food on the table or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't say, uh, don't become an entrepreneur at that point, but, um, but, uh, be cognizant of the fact that a lot of businesses do fail, um, early on, uh, before mm-hmm. they get their grounding, um, and get that foundation to be able to, you know, start bringing money in. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, number two is, uh, and I think we had discussed in a previous podcast, but when you're not passionate about the product or service you are selling, um, if, if you aren't excited about what you're selling and you wouldn't buy it, um, how can you expect somebody else to believe you when you're selling it to them? Um, and then number three is when you're after the false reality of what it means to be an entrepreneur. Um, Hmm. and so... Merriam Webster uh, dictionary defines an entrepreneur as one who organizes, manage, and manages and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of a lot of us do get you know carried away with the the big successful entrepreneurs um, in the social network. They you know portray Mark Zuckerberg as having you know mm-hmm. uh, CEO of Facebook as having on his business card like I'm CEO. Um, where you just go and be like I'm the boss. You know what I mean? Like nobody can tell me what to do. But um, in reality, that entrepreneurship, um, y- you have to, uh, you have to know what it actually means. Uh, what's at stake. It's not just the mm-hmm. fancy stuff. The, you know, what society thinks an entrepreneur is that, oh, well, I don't have to work that hard anymore. Cause I don't have to work the nine to five. Cause I'm an entrepreneur. Like, yeah, you're not working nine to five. You're working 12 to 12. But, um, but yeah, so those are the three areas that I would caution Mm -hmm. people or make or say, you know, maybe think, think twice, um, before jumping in right now is if you haven't figured out what you're passionate about, if people rely on you and, um, and there's a, uh, you haven't prepared to, um, mitigate the failures. And, um, if you don't truly understand the work that's going to be necessary to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So Chris, I want to, um, I want to say, could we hit them one by one? Yeah. I want to share something with you guys that I think is a little crazy. And I'd like you guys' insight on it. Um, okay. Shalanda, no regrets. I just want you to know before we start, <laughs> no regrets. But hit me with number one again. I, I think I got like a so, true, true story about it. Number one, mm-hmm. when it would irresponsibly or recklessly jeopardize the well-being of loved ones. Mm-hmm. I don't understand or I don't know what that means. So, so I, I would change it to uh, to maybe those who um, uh, uh, depend on you um, 
for financial uh, exactly. security or stability. I could, so, I could give you an example. Though. I could give you an example. So the first time I started my first consulting firm, it was my side gig because I was hoping to transition from my full time into my side gig full time, mm -hmm. which would have been my own business, right? And one of the reasons that it failed is because as a single mom, I needed that paycheck, that consistent paycheck. I had private school to pay for, I had a mortgage, I had, you know, I had all of those things. And I had to make the decision, do I pursue my dream of having my own business or is it more important for me to maintain a quality of life where I can raise my daughter mm -hmm. the way I wanted to raise her? So, that number one resonated with me because I made the conscious decision that, okay, maybe that wasn't the right time. Like I could do it now. Mm -hmm. My daughter's grown. Right. She got a job. She doing her own thing. So like if I spend all my money and I fall flat on my face, it no longer impacts her the way it would have impacted her right. back then. I started my so, first business. Chris, get the world's smallest violin ready. <laughs> Hear me out. I'm telling you guys, this is what we're talking about, right? Completely, completely true stories. Completely true stories. Mm -hmm. Yep. When we started, I told you guys that I thought about doing this business thing when I was in high school. Like, that's no lie. I was I was at Southern Connecticut State University. Um, was it three out of my four years? No girlfriend, no nothing. Don't want to get too attached to nothing in Connecticut because I'm going home and home. Right? I finally got a girlfriend. And everything is going great. But the one thing I was true to is the fact that I was going to do precision. That was it. I know I'm coming home. I know I'm going to start a business. I know I want to give back to my community. This is it. Precision is it. Precision is it. Precision is it. God is my witness up until a couple, maybe even last night. Yesterday, I was talking to the same girl. Like, we haven't spoken in maybe about 10 years she's married mm -hmm. and we were just talking about like how things were and she was like you know so how's precision mm -hmm. and i was like oh, you remember that she's like remember that was all you spoke about like that was mm -hmm. your life so when i wanted to say that role was somewhat coming to an end um like in business, I feel like, you know, I plan for my breakup. So I let them know, like, precision is it. Yep. And her thing was that, like, it's amazing to see, like, I remain true to what it is that I wanted. However, it goes into the growth portion of our conversation when I'm like, you know, it's not what it is I want it to be. Mm -hmm. But it's not that precision isn't what it is that I want it to be. Is that, like, I feel like I'm setting social standards you see what i'm saying so i want to make x amount of dollars i want to do whatever it is however it is being true to myself i know i'm just happy with what it is that i'm doing but mm -hmm. um for, for me like i've given up relationships mm -hmm. for this thing um so now the moment we're having the time of our life shooting sunrises um putting together these videos and someone got in, getting paid mm -hmm. i ended my relationship I think it might have been 2011 or something like that. Like over the same fact, I was clocking a lot of hours. I spent more time with Shalana than than the people I care about. We had lunches, um, mm -hmm. and they would be like, "Oh, but you don't take me on dates," and I'm like, "I wasn't on a date. I just went to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> like that's work." I'm like, I build them for that. Like, they thought we were just going to be sitting there eating. I'm like, have whatever you want. I'm like, but I'm putting it in the bill. They going to pay for that. And, like, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it was like, like, those were the views. Like, you know, mm -hmm. um, everything for me just completely revolves around precision. And even in having the conversation, Chris, you said you had your daughter. Um, when I had my son, that was my first, I don't want to say real real awakening um there's a saying in the caribbean um and the saying goes once they mouth cut they're gonna eat mm -hmm. and yeah. i felt like it, it goes twofold to me it's um it's a trial of faith mm -hmm. so just like how shalana was saying like she had the bills to pay she had this and she knew the quality of life that she wanted yep. at the same time for me what that turned into was like 
well, I got two choices. I'm going to do Trecision, and I could do Trecision, and we're going to eat. We just not, we just not going to have a steak. Right. We might not have shrimp. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But it's like, you are going to eat. Um, mm-hmm. And that's just it. So, like, when we, like, here we say those things about love and, and the business. Like, I've, I have no regrets about it, but I know I've put just about, there, there's, there's a very thin list of things that come before transition. And it's such a part of my life. I mean, you guys know what we meet when we're just doing, um, I don't want to say casual things. Mm-hmm. Um, even on my shoot, my kids are there. You see what I'm saying? Because to me, just like how Shalana said previously about creating a legacy, that um, generational wealth, um, what mm-hmm. I feel like what we don't do is involve our kids, our children, in the stuff that we do. We don't teach them how to manage businesses. We don't, there's a lot of um, different aspects of life. We don't teach them. We just send them to school. And and it's like, get your education with no idea of how to apply that uh, education. Mm-hmm. So like just hearing you say those things, it made me reflect on all the relationships that I've given up yep. in order to have precision and not even just the relationships that I want to say, like, I feel like I've just given up on um, I've seen how it affected my my son's mom mm-hmm. you know um it definitely took a toll because she was she came home for a while and it would be stuff like around Christmas time we do festivals so I left eight o'clock Thursday morning and realistically it's not until maybe seven Can o'clock we say that? Saturday Can we yeah say seven that? o'clock Saturday <laughs> I'm just rolling in and it's like, what happened? Well, you know, we had the wedding and then the wedding went into the all night event. Right. Um, mm-hmm. When it ended at 12 and at 1215, I was at village from 1215 to about five o'clock in the morning. I was here. And then from there, this person had a recording session. So that I was on production for these eight hours. And then after that, I had to be back down here mm-hmm. and I did mm-hmm. this. It's a day later. You know, you just had a son. What what are you doing? Like, are you not going to be like it became that that faction where it was like the question was almost like a, if you're not going to be there or not. And I was like, man, um, it's real. It's yep. real. Um, And providing that care, then it became for me like certain choices was like, does it come down to something monetary or do I like I don't want to say if I had to be there, be there. But I was like, I knew I wanted to be there. But at the same time you do have this this urge to provide. Right. You know, um, and like for me, like like I said, when you said it, it just became more real. Like I'm to the point now where in life, I realize sometimes you, I'm at one point and even in your love life, these people might not be at that certain point. Mm-hmm. So they can't understand what it is that you're doing. Like, so nobody would ever feel like or could on quite understand my love for precision because mm-hmm. to me they're just not entrepreneurs. They they don't know when you have this passion. They don't know when I'm talking like I'm out there shooting five o'clock in the morning. It there's like that disconnect because you're not working for a company where things are guaranteed, where right. they where things I want to call it secure, where they can't mm-hmm. feel as secure because as an entrepreneur, if you don't work, you don't eat. Right. And yeah. if I'm busy working you know, that's the last time here, that's the last time um, to do these different things. And unfortunately, like, unfortunately and fortunately, um, it's like I could see where it's taking its toll on my rela- relationships. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm happy that I'm honest enough with myself to let them know this is where I'm at in our kind of way. So um, what I was saying, like, you know, <clears throat> that was a long tangent, but just to, like, I was saying, like, just to get that that different insight about it, um, and I, and do you I think, think that that falls completely under that category, or how? So I, I'll, I guess I'll give you where my my mindset was when I um, uh, when I wrote that is um, like for myself, and obviously not all entrepreneurs are are, are parents by any means, um, uh, and everybody has you know their own why or their own motivation. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but for me, uh, uh, like I was saying before my daughter, um, arrived, I was, uh, I was still an entrepreneur. Um, but I don't know if I took it as seriously, 
um, right. and, and, and the weight of what entrepreneurship meant for me, like, uh, you know, um, as far as really sustaining, because I, I could accept, you know, um, eating, you know, uh, salt right. with ketchup on it or uh or i could do um the you know ramen noodles and stuff like that uh if if if, if i needed to if, if if you know to to make my dreams come true um but if i were to uh um put my daughter in a situation where she was having to um you know struggle because of my dreams that's where mm -hmm. um uh the timing comes into to play where like shalanda said you know it's not that she gave up on her dream when she made a decision not to start, you know, her journey right um, then when she needed to provide for her daughter. Um, but it was just, uh, you know, what is my um, my current uh, priority and how do I want that priority to look? So for right. for some people, the priority um, becomes the, you know, the uh, uh, the child um, or, you know, in a relationship as well. Like I, I was with my wife, but I will say um, that I I still didn't take entrepreneurship as seriously until like my family was, um, uh, was intact. And I was right. like, all right, uh, as, right. You know, if I'm head of household, how do I make this work? And then it was really back to looking at the numbers, um, more so than just, right. uh, where do I want to go? Um, so that's, that's just my, uh, and I, and I, and again, I, I um, did preface that it, and no, I was just saying, don't become an entrepreneur under these no, circumstances, no, no, no. but yeah, uh, really the timing time just may not be great it. for you. Yeah. Exactly, and and that's part of what it is. I felt like I wanted to show too is like sometimes we just have to know what it is that we're willing to risk and yep. at what time. Because for me, at those point in times, like the relationship, um, unfortunately, that's what it is. I was willing to give up because I knew and I know what it is that I believe. In, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, so, but it, it's just like, and that's part of it not being an easy trip, um, and not. And at that point in time, when you don't have other entrepreneurs or other people that, that share, not share your vision, but understand your passion, like, mm -hmm. it's hard. Like, how do you explain to somebody else? And that's what it is that you were, um, I believe Sammy kind of alluded to. It's like almost playing, like, you know, this relationship's not working out. Like, it, it's, it's never the right time to have that conversation. You're like, man, I could do it next week. I could do it two mm -hmm. weeks from now. Next, you know, it's a year later. And then... <laughs> You're starting to have this conversation, and it's like they're like, "But I wasted a year of my life." And you're like, "Yeah, but I waited a year. I, you, you, planned, you, I was planning for this moment." Do you, do you want do you want full honesty, person? <laughs> I, uh, um, and I'm not naming people or anything like that, but I I was in a two year relationship that um, I knew after one year uh, it was over, um, but I couldn't find the right time uh, to break up. So after that, hey, I was two like, years, you know what? Chris. <laughs> Shalanda, I did not like confrontation. Entrepreneurship had to teach me that. I'm with you, Chris. I'm with you. Like, like you perfectly, like, you know, you think about it. Like, you know, like, they got to, the, the right time is coming. I feel like that's what it is that we yep. tell ourselves. Like, you wait for that right time to come and, and waiting for that right time to come, you don't realize how many years or how much exactly. more time that you've put into it. Yep. So even sometimes now when that right time seems like it's here, you're back to the point where you're like, uh, I'm kind of secure right now. So I really want to, one in the hand is worth two in the bush. That's what we say here. Yep. Chris. Yep. So yep. I know what it is that I got, but I don't know what it is that I'm going to get. Right. You know, and, and that, so that's where it is. I'll find like we kind of put ourselves back on mm -hmm. in waiting for the right time. I mean, you know, as we're talking about the when and the things that we're giving up, all three of us are entrepreneurs, you know? And when we started talking about this podcast, this podcast is a passion project, mm -hmm. right? Going back to what you say, Tristan, as an entrepreneur, if you don't work, you don't eat. Yep. And we believe enough in this podcast because we're hoping that it would have the impact on other entrepreneurs to let them know that they're not alone. And when you have to make these unconventional, sometimes difficult decisions to support your dreams and to support the growth of your business, when others don't understand, this is the space. Mm -hmm. This is the space, right? Because we're here recording. That means we can be building clients. <laughs> 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 But we believe in it enough 
we believe in it enough to say, okay, I'm going to divert <laughs> a couple <laughs> hours of billable time. Yep. To hang out with my bros, you know, my brothers from another <laughs> mother, <laughs> salt and pepper, <laughs> and hopefully be able to impart some wisdom on the community that's listening to us because we just think it's that important in a conversation to have. So. Yeah. It is. It is. And that's why I felt like so, to a certain extent is these are the conversations that we don't have. These are the conversations um that I feel that aren't real because nobody's gonna tell you how hard your entrepreneurship, your dream played on the relationships. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When it works, it's great. And that way it would always yeah. be like, Oh, I I overcame this. But at the same time as an entrepreneur, sometimes we do feel like we're we're giving up a great thing. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Or yep. they're not so sure um, at that time. You know, so um, you can drop your comments below. Let me know what relationships <laughs> you've given up. And I'm sure that we can start a network of lonely entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it also reinforces a conversation that we were having in the previous episode where we were talking about, you know, you see the successes, but you don't see mm-hmm. the multiplicity of quote unquote failures mm-hmm. and things right. that you had to risk and endure before you can get to that success. But the long and short of it is you can't you can't learn the lessons through the experience of failure and you cannot experience the highs of success mm-hmm. unless you start. Right. 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 And, right. And through the process, so this was- the persistence and the determination. Um, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll leave a little uh, uh, nugget here. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, bamboo uh, uh, mm. takes about um, what, from the time it's planted, bamboo uh, will grow underground. Um, I want to say it's like up to like 10 years um, that mm-hmm. before it ever comes up ab- above the surface. Um, but mm-hmm. the moment it comes above the surface, bamboo shoots up in a very quick amount of time. And right. So if you uh, uh, connect that to entrepreneurship, uh, a lot of people look at the the perceived overnight successes that just mm-hmm. blew up and became famous. And they're like, all right, what's, what's the trick to become that viral sensation right. of overnight success? Um, and while it does occasionally happen, um, what a lot of people don't see is how long and how hard people had to work before um the bamboo ever saw the light of day um in somebody's Mm -hmm. entrepreneurial journey so um i guess to wrap this episode here on when is the right time uh the um the simple answer slash non-answer is when it's right for you (laughs) Uh Uh um and uh and only when it's right for you um and you are the only one who can decide when that time is um so you can uh, create it. It can happen to you. Um, you can be pushed into it. Um, you can prepare and do all the research and wait for the opportunity. Um, but at the end of the day, your story is going to be different from uh, anybody else's. Um, mm-hmm. Yet our sharing of those stories uh, bring us here and uh, give us a little solace that we're not all crazy. Um, and that's why we're on the <laughs> XCC podcast. <laughs> Are you sure about that we're not all that crazy? Or I'm not- Sure, I think the jury's still out on that one. Crazy. <laughs> Maybe we just confide in the fact that we all are crazy. How about that? Um, well, we're on this trip together because we yeah, need to <laughs> All right. Well, this is uh, another episode of um, Entrepreneur's Trip with XTC. Uh, we are Shalanda. I am Shalanda. <laughs> uh, I'm Tristan. <laughs> and I am Chris. We will uh, s- see you on the next episode. And good toss, Chris. Good toss. I saw it. <laughs> Almost intercepted by Tristan, too. Almost. I know, right? <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.